What if some day or night a demon were to steal after you into your loneliest loneliness and say to you, This life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more, and there will be nothing new in it, but every pain and every joy and every thought and sigh and everything unutterably small or great in your life will have to return to you, all in the same succession and sequence. Even this spider in this moonlight between the trees, and even this moment, and I myself. The eternal hourglass of existence is turned upside down, again and again and you with it, speck of dust. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or how well disposed would you have to become to yourself and to life to crave nothing more fervently than this ultimate eternal confirmation and seal? <clears throat> That's a uh, Obviously, Frederick Nietzsche, gay science, talking about eternal recurrence, eternal return. I don't think that he's positing that <clears throat> such a state is likely to happen, but what he's doing is he's forcing you, taking you by the hair, if you had any hair, and <clears throat> forcing you to stare into, the, into a mirror or into the void. It's forcing you to say, never mind anything that's going on outside. It's all going to happen again. What do you make of the fact that you simply exist? What value do you place on that? Um, Southwell would say that, well, that's an interesting question because existence precedes essence. Your existence precedes any attributes that that existence might have. Okay. <clears throat> But does that mean that existence itself doesn't have an essence? <laughs> it's uh, and elsewhere in South where you read about his ideas of facticity. Let's say and my brother mentioned this once to me when I was a kid, and it kind of blew my mind out, and it still kind of fascinates me. I guess it's my own version of eternal recurrence. Imagine if you had your capacity to retain anything from one moment to the next permanently dislocated. You had no memory or capacity to remember anything. You can't remember what happened 30 seconds ago. You can't remember what happened 30 years ago. It's just, it's not even gone. It might as well have never been there. But you still are conscious. It's not so much <clears throat> what would it be like to exist in such a state or in Nietzsche's treadmill of eternal recurrence. Um, the question is, compare yourself in this state where we do have a past and a future that we do believe is our own to either A, someone who has a past and a future that are predetermined and will never vary and will be lived again and again forever or you have some, you are someone who has no past and no future but you still exist compare that to your own existence right now is that pure essence of being just existing <laughs> just the ontological state what nature does that have? What value do you place on it? You can say, well, we can't place any value on it because value is contingent upon consciousness in the first place or existence. But <laughs> that kind of defeats the, or doesn't defeat the point, but it actually is kind of impossible to, to bring into things because, again, in Nietzsche's eternal recurrence or in my guy with no past and no future, there is no before. There is no after. There's just is. You exist. What of it? 